conversion factors. So in chemistry class, we often need to convert a measurement from one unit to another one. One way of doing this is to use a conversion factor. So it is a ratio derived from the equality between two different units that can be used to convert from one unit to another. and they are always equal to one. In other words, the numerator is equal to the denominator. So what we're gonna do in the first part of this lesson is look at some familiar conversion factors, and then we're gonna go back and explore the metric system and some conversion factors that we can derive from the table that we looked at in our previous lesson. For example, if we're talking in terms of money, we know that four quarters is the same thing as saying that I have one dollar. So we can set up a conversion factor that has four quarters in the numer numerator and one dollar in the denominator. And we can even flip this conversion factor where we could have one dollar in the numerator and four quarters in the denominator. Now, obviously, we don't use quarters and dollars in chemistry, but we do take measurements. So let's look at if I were to use a ruler. Now, this isn't the metric system, but something you're familiar with. We could look at the relationship between inches and feet. So we know that 12 inches is the same thing as saying that I have one foot. And again, we can put 12 inches in the numerator, one foot in the denominator, or we can flip this conversion factor and have one foot in the numerator and 12 inches in the denominator. Let's look at the metric system. So earlier we had talked about distance from Chicago to St. Louis to Chicago, and we talked about using kilometers. But let's say that I would have had that value in meters instead. If I use the table, we know that the relationship between the base and the prefix kilo is that one kilogram would be equal to a thousand grams. So we could put one kilogram on the, in the numerator, a thousand grams in the denominator, and they would mean the same thing. And again, we talked already that I can replace the base units. So again, we could use one kilometer is equal to a thousand meters. So our purpose for talking about conversion factors is so that we can talk about a mathematical technique. And the mathematical technique that we use in chemistry is referred to as dimensional analysis. And the definition for dimensional analysis is that it is a mathematical technique that allows you to use units to solve a problem involving measurements. So think about it this way. When we set up a problem, we're going to plug in the units first and then plug in the number of values that match those units. And you know, you can come back to these lessons at any time, but also your textbook has some really good resources. So in your textbook on page 13, there is a skills toolkit that will kind of walk you through what we're going to look at on the next slide. So I'm given a problem to solve in chemistry class. And there are two things the problem is always going to give me. It's going to give me a number with a unit. And it's also going to give me the unit I want my final answer to have. And we're going to use these two pieces of information to set up our problem. So the first step is always that we're going to plug in the number and the given unit from the problem. And then at the very end, we're going to put in the unit we want to, our answer, our final answer to have. Now, how we get from the given unit to the one of use it is the term we looked at earlier, which is the conversion factor. So we're always multiplying by a conversion factor. Conversion factors always have a numerator and a denominator. 
And we know this, that I need the given unit to cancel, so it is going to go in the denominator. And I want my final answer to have a specific unit, and that's going to go in the numerator. And here we can see that the given unit cancels. And we're going to plug in numbers into that conversion factor that are going to make the numerator equal to the denominator. Now, sometimes we like things to look all nice and neat, so we want even our given unit to look like a conversion factor, and we can do that simply by placing a 1 underneath the given unit. And that 1 is just a placeholder. It doesn't have any units. Okay, so let's practice using fun units. Okay, let's say that my given unit is the smiley face, and I want my final unit to be the lightning bolt. Well, that means in this very last conversion factor in the numerator, we're going to put the lightning bolt. Now, the units I've used to get from the smiley face to the lightning bolt are these, the sun, the heart, and the cube. Now, I need everything, the smiley face, the sun, the heart, the cube, all to cancel and be left with only the lightning bolt. So we're going to put the smiley face in the denominator of the, our first conversion factor. We're going to put the sun in the denominator of our next conversion factor. We're going to put the heart in the denominator of our third conversion, fa conversion factor. And we're going to put the cube in the denominator of our last conversion factor. So by having this arrangement, all the units are going to cancel out except for the last one, and that should be the unit we want in our final answer. And so this is the technique we're going to use throughout your chemistry career. We're going to use this technique in our model we're practicing converting within the metric system.